get your mind right. Get your mind right. And then, and then look at somebody, look at somebody else and tell them a mind, a mind is a terrible thing. Is a terrible thing to lose. To lose. Oh, God, you thought I was gonna say waste <laughs> to lose. Yeah. All right, now that's so good. I'm gonna be talking about. Can y'all hear me good? Because yeah. it's going to be kind of hard with this okay. mic. No I know the Pastor Antoine, we paid for it. But we're not. <laughs> <laughs> we're not paid for it. So I'm going to be just doing a presentation with regards to bridging the gap between mental health and the church. Because there is a disconnect. All right? I agree. Uh, you, you have people, a lot of the good portion of the body of Christ on the side of it's all demonic, right? <laughs> but uh, we're, we're going to tackle some of these things so we can bring some proper education. Right. Uh, because ain't no sense of being spirit-led and dumb. Right? right? right. Spirit-led but perpetuating stigmas and stereotypes. So we want to avoid that. Uh, one of the things I'll say is, emphatically, everybody in here knows that medical doctors are necessary, right? right. Nephrologists, yeah. neurologists, orthopedic doctors, cardiologists, and the list goes on. Uh, because we know home remedies are good, but they only go but so far, right? Mm -hmm. You break your neck, you're not about to stay home, take a teaspoon of honey, drink some ginger ale, <laughs> and take a nap. Yeah. Right? <laughs> You're going to right. find yourself at the hospital to see a doctor that will be able to help you get that neck together. Yes. Right? Yes. But somehow in the Christian world, especially in Pentecostal sex, Say it have said therapists and counselors are not needed. But therapists and counselors are medical doctors. Yes. Yes. All, right. All right? Teach us. And this, mm -hmm. your mind, your emotions, are as much of a reality for you as your heart, mm -hmm. as your bones, mm -hmm. as your right. vessels, your veins, your arteries, your toes, everything else, right? Mm -hmm. And so why put your trust you know, in the hands of a doctor when we know they're capable to help your extremities, yeah. something going on with your heart, your kidney, your toes, your knees, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to just give it to Jesus when it comes to my mind and my Ooh. emotions. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. Kind of a contradictory contradiction there. What most Christians fail to realize is this. Jesus often heals through human hands and practical means. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right? And I'm convinced that many people, many more people, would receive their healing and wholeness if they stopped just waiting on a divine touch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because when you just wait on a divine touch, you're disregarding the gifts in the earth that God has placed yeah. here right. to Amen. help you. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Everybody's familiar with that uh, a story that goes something like this. I'll just give a brief uh, synopsis of it person drowning. Oh, Jesus going to save me. They send a boat. No, Jesus got me. They send the ship. Jesus got me. Then a little canoe came by. You sure? No, Jesus, Jesus got me. And the man drowned and went to heaven. He said, I wasn't ready to die. Why you let me die? He said, I sent the help. You just didn't take it in the way that it presented itself. And so sometimes when we're looking for that divine touch, again, that divine touch will come through human hands, mm -hmm. and practical means. Yes. Now, mental and emotional disorders are ailments that trouble the human existence. So if therapists and counselors aren't needed, then I'll emphatically suggest that no medical doctor is needed. Wow. Just give every ailment to Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Somebody fall out right now. We're going to pray, but we're going to find our way to call 911. Why? 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 Because it's just the wise thing to do. Because your faith has to go with some works, right? Some <laughs> That's practicality. Good. That's good. Now, by saying no medical doctors are needed, that sounds a bit absurd. And that's so I can leverage this point. We need therapists and counselors. I agree. Look at somebody say, it's okay to have Jesus okay. and a therapist. Yes. And a therapist. Yes. And a therapist. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I mentioned before that people erroneously suggest that mental and emotional ailments are a result of demonic activity. In some cases, some, say some, some right? Cases. Some cases. 
but that's not in all cases, right? Yeah. So we have to get out. Because I grew up in the church where everything was a spirit. Me too. Yeah. You yeah. ate too much, that's an eating spirit. <laughs> you blink too much, that's a blinking spirit. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Talk too much, that's a talking spirit. Right? That's a spirit. <laughs> that's a spirit. <laughs> but one of the things we have to realize is, and I'll say this, we live in a fallen and broken world because of what happened in Genesis chapter 3. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. So when people are dealing with mental and emotional ailments, you got to be careful by saying, uh, you're just dealing with a demon, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody goes to war to fight for our freedom and come back with some PTSD right. to suggest to them, oh, you're dealing with a demon. No. It's, no. it's insult yes, it is. and wow. unfair. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, I believe every problem in the earth has a solution. I agree. Yes. Amen. Yes. And God has equipped all people over this world Look at somebody say, including you, including you, who are knowledgeable and anointed to deal with the problems. Mm -hmm. So when we look for Jesus to solve things, he said, I will when you get up off your butt yes. and do what I yes. called you to do. That's good. Right? That's good. right? Yeah. Let's remember, we all believe in the supernatural, right? Yes. We believe in miracles, signs, and wonders, right? Yes. yes. But face it, to believe these will always take place directly from God to mankind defies the purpose of the medical world. And it would make no sense for God to have endowed people with the minds to conceive solutions okay. to various problems if he's just going to work miracles. I know that's right. Yeah. 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 In our effort that to bridge true. the gap between mental health and the church, we need to see the supernatural... Yeah. And the medical world as partners yeah. in God's overall plan to remedy the ailments and the sicknesses that mankind face. Mm -hmm. Partnership. The super, hear this, this is definitely something you want to get in your notes. The supernatural does not eliminate the need for medicine. Say that. And no matter how advanced medicine becomes, it does not negate the need for supernatural demonstrations. Wow. Wow. Because after all, James 2.17 and James 2.26 tells us, emphatically and in essence, the same thing. Faith without works yeah. is dead, yeah. being alone. Let's, let's yell this out loud. Not that we're claiming it, but it's reality. Mental illness is a reality. Say that. Mental illness is a reality. It's a reality. Mental illness includes clinical depression. Yeah. Anxiety of all sorts. Y'all know it ain't just one type of anxiety, right? You have many. And it could manifest differently in everybody's life, even people with similar experiences or even the same experiences. Uh, like two people can get raped, right? And they can just develop totally different disorders and things like that, right? Uh, bipolar disorder, but it's also formerly known as manic depressive disorder. Schizophrenia. PTSD and the list goes on. Does anybody know what the number one mental illness is in the United States? The most common mental illness out of all our name, bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, uh, anxiety disorders, PTSD. Depression. Anxiety. Anxiety is the number one, the most common. Huh? And it's even more. Even more. Elevated, right, because of the landscape of things that have happened because of COVID. Yeah. That's why some never negate even the experiences of children because I'm going to tell you, sometimes people develop, we'll go over this, but I'll just make this point. Uh, mental and emotional health disorders and problems can arise from situations and circumstance events that we deem, oh, that ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. Your dog got ran up, girl, get, wait, get you another dog. No, don't negate nobody's experience because you never know how deeply it impacts them. Yeah. That's now, good. check this out. When we say mental illness is a reality, it affects everybody, no matter how Holy Ghost filled you are, how safe, sanctified yeah. you are, right? Uh, because we understand no matter how filled with the spirit you are, it does not negate you from the human experience and the pains, the sorrows, and the woes that go along with that. Turn that phone off. <laughs> now, 19.86%. 
of adults are experiencing a mental illness. This is recent stats from 2022. Wow. That's almost 20% of adults in the United States are experiencing a mental illness. That's nearly one out of every five people you pass. Wow. And, and guess what? Even in our churches and ministries, sister churches everywhere else, work, family, one out of every five people. And that's equivalent to nearly 50 million Americans with a mental illness. Here's the thing. 4.91%, close to 5%, are experiencing a severe mental illness, which is approximately one out of every 25 people. Now, you can have a mental illness but still operate in the basic life activities, yeah. working, cooking, cleaning, grooming, and all of that type of stuff. But guess what? There are some people that are dealing with some things. It's even a struggle to wash their body. Mm -hmm. They can't go to work. They can't develop relationships. They can't keep themselves groomed, right? Yeah. Um, and that's when it becomes a problem because nobody likes to see anybody not able to function in basic life activities. Mm -hmm. That's what they call the simple things that we're supposed to be able to do. Christians are not exempted from these statistics. So yes, as I said, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, deacons, bishops, ministers, and lay members are affected by these conditions all across the world. Even more detrimental is the fact that many people are functioning in their gifts and operating in their callings while in a broken and unhealed state of being. Yes, sir. Because they've been told, serve while you're bleeding. Yeah. Mm. No. You drip blood on folks when you oh, serve while you're bleeding. Come on, come on. Man, say or that. God can use you while you're bleeding. Mm. No. Of course, you don't. God can call you and God can begin to do some things, but do we really think it's the will of God to use us and leave us in a broken state? No. No, no the same God that calls us to a purpose and a calling and an assignment is the same one that equips you. And part of that equipment is healed, being healed and whole. Yeah. And I want to just give a little revelation. You all probably know this about the difference between healing and wholeness. See, we don't give both sides of the story. Oh, God, just heal me. Just heal me. We need wholeness. See, when you heal, it stops the condition from affecting okay. your future. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when the condition has been in your life, it has already affected you, so you need the wholeness. You need wow. God to step back into your life wow. and erase the residue of what the condition has done to you. I like that. Whatever you're going through and dealing with, just wait right off for a brief moment. Don't just pray for healing. Mm -hmm. Pray for wholeness. Amen. God, this has caused some problems in my life. I need you to walk back through every second of my life and handle the issues and, and the, the residue that's left from the problem and what it has done to my life. Yes. That's yes. good. Yes, it is. Now, it is my belief that many would receive healing and wholeness if they just confront and stop trying to ignore what is present in their lives. One of the most overly used phrases in Christendom is, I don't receive that. <laughs> you ain't got to receive it as your final verdict, but if it's something that is happening, you have to acknowledge it and deal with it. Somebody break their leg right now. I don't receive that broken leg. It's broke. You ain't got to receive it. It's there. And I want to tell us this. That's good. That's good. Get this little statement in your notes. Time does not heal anything. Whoa, come on. We've heard that statement, time heals all wounds. Time doesn't no, heal don't. nothing. No, it don't. No matter how much time has elapsed, if you don't confront right. and take the necessary steps to deal with any mental and emotional ailments that are present in your life, those ailments will always remain a part of you. Yeah. Ignoring or suppressing your inner issues does not change your situation. Yeah. And some people have mastered suppression so long, they equate it with healing. Mm -hmm. Until the right button get pushed, yeah, yeah, and it causes it to yeah, surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. don't it. Don't it. So, we grade our own papers to us. So I say, ask the Holy Ghost to show you. Yeah, yeah. Are there some mental things lying dormant in me? Mm -hmm. Are there some emotional ailments lying dormant in me? The Holy Ghost will reveal, not only will he reveal, but he'll lead you to the solution. Yes. Yes. Right? Don't be scared. Don't be scared to ask him to search you. Does not take away from your assignment in the earth. Does not take away from your calling or, or the power that God works through you in your life, right? 
Yeah. But we gotta deal with this human side. Yeah. Suicide. Yeah. Is the 12th leading cause of death in the U.S. Yeah. Face it, folks, it's killing themselves that believe in Jesus. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's a reality yeah. Yeah. in the church. Yeah. Now, the most reliable stats that I can find up to date with regards to suicide is from 2020. So we know it is probably elevated because of COVID and everything. But in 2020, there were estimated 1,200,000 suicide attempts mm -hmm. across the U.S. Mm -hmm. And approximately 46,000 succeeded. Wow. Mm -hmm. Let's all remember that we have fellow believers who have succumbed to the suicide, including those in leadership. Yeah. yeah. There is no one-size-fits-all as to why they chose to end their life, but this is a reality in the body of Christ that we have to deal with. Let's restore to the body of Christ, somebody say, a sense of compassion. A sense of compassion. Not see. <laughs> they wouldn't what they thought they would and kill themselves. They ain't really Woo! believe in Jesus and took themselves out. That's what folks say. That's deep. Or if they were really connected to the Lord, they wouldn't have did Never that. Never killed mm -hmm. Folks love seeing that type of stuff until it hits home. Yeah. Right. Right. Ain't that right, Pastor Antoine? Yeah. Believers in general have to get rid of the self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. Just jot that down. Get rid of self-righteousness. Yeah. Just as a reminder to yourself, even if you don't operate in self-righteousness, just jot it down. Get rid of self-righteousness. That often parades in our lives and our ministries if we expect to bring serious change to the mental health arena. The Bible says, I'll use this and just draw a principle from it. Amen. Scripture that says, if a man be overtaken in fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. The point I want to draw from there is, how are you going to help anybody <laughs> with a self-righteous spirit? <laughs> it's going to present a block right. to you being able to help them. Self-righteousness presents a block to you helping folks in ministry and mm -hmm. natural life and everywhere else. So that's why we can't have any room for that. Yeah. So now we're going to ask a question. Ask somebody, why are people not getting treated? Why are people, people not, not getting, getting treated? treated? Over half. This is dangerous. This is it's very disheartening and discouraging. Over half, 56% of adults with a mental illness, that's roughly 27 million people, wow. receive no treatment. Wow. Now, we need to look at some of the reasons why. We've got a lot of things. We're going to go through some technical things, and then we're going to go uh, to some more social things and some more spiritual-related things. Number one, no insurance or limited coverage of services. That's a reality for folks, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that's something that I'm praying, even as an intercessor, uh, that God would do a work at the local, the, yeah. the state, and the national government level with regards to that issue yeah. uh, of making insurance coverage so tedious yeah. for people. Yeah. Wow. If you have medical insurance, including Medicaid plans, there is something called mental health parity. Mm -hmm. That means that insurance plans are obligated no matter, even if it's the Medicaid, uh -huh. are obligated to provide some type of <coughs> mental health coverage and benefits for you. Yeah. Wow. So what everybody, mm -hmm. whatever insurance you have, find out. You may not need it right now, mm -hmm. right? But just find out, as your due diligence, mm -hmm. what type of benefits your insurance cover offers as it relates to um, behavioral health. Okay. All right? Yep. And tell everyone in your circle of influence to check their insurance benefits to see what benefits are offered to them through their plan. Here's the thing. You never know when you may have to tap in. Mm -hmm. So it's called behavioral health instead of mental health? Well, they have it listed as behavioral health because okay. it encompasses mental, emotional health, substance use and okay. the list goes on okay. mm -hmm. so you, if you call say hey what kind of behavioral health benefits do i have okay you know but even if you say mental health benefits they don't know what to look yeah, up okay yeah, yeah. number two a shortfall in psychiatrists and an overall undersized mental health workforce because everybody are going into other fields yeah. so and enough people to help the people with the issues and this is what i say if every huh my youth make a oh. Siri talk back to you. <laughs> <laughs> if everyone stops trying to be the next big preacher or wonder behind the pulpit, mm. many would actually discover that God is calling them to the mental health arena. Wow. <laughs> we need anointed and powerful kingdom people Ooh. occupying every sector of society, including the mental health sector. Yes. Right? Yes. Number three. 
reason why folks ain't getting treatment, lack of available treatment types, inpatient treatments, individual therapy, intensive, com intensive community service. Here's the thing. <clears throat> what good is the government and even statewide, national, uh, why offering services like you live in Cleveland? They said, yeah, oh, yeah, we got a program to help you, but it's in Richfield. Right. Yeah. Ain't going to help you. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to be accessible oh, yeah. in every yeah. city, and that's what we're not just praying for, but I've wrote probably, I don't just do praying, I do some works behind it. I probably wrote about 75, maybe 80 letters, you know, through uh, Senate, Congress. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, I've even sent some to the White House. Uh, to my local people, because it needs to happen at the local level too, local, state, and national. Mm -hmm. We need to have this stuff readily available. Mm -hmm. You got a liquor store, uh, Burger Kings, hair stores, everything else, plenteous. We need to have yes. uh, mental and uh, emotional health mm -hmm. uh, spots. Yes. Yes, I, I, I think that is amazing what you just said. Mm -hmm. Do you have a template for how to get this involved? The body of Christ mm -hmm. could use. To send out to our local level and uh, so that they can start getting more of yeah. 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 I could, I can, I have to look it up because I haven't sent it out. It's been a while, but I'll look it up and I'll get it to you. Okay. Oh, wow. I, I'll make sure I make it a point That's to good. get that to you. Yeah. Make sure you remind me. Right? Um, number four, <laughs> she might help, right? <laughs> now we can't have the help for getting. <laughs> no, you no, can't no, forget. I, I can forget, but you can't forget. <laughs> Uh, number four, there's a disconnect between primary care systems and a behavioral health system. Some of our primary care doctors don't care nothing about it. You tell them, I just want to give you this blood work. Hey, I'm going through some problems. Can you make a record? Hey, we just need to do a TSH, a, a urine analysis. Hey, man, I'm good. I need some help here. Make the referral. And the reason why so many people... It's, Are, it's so hard to go yourself, though, yeah. and get the help. Yeah. Yeah. But when you get referrals, that makes it easier. Yeah. It's a shame for people to be dealing with some things, mm -hmm. mental, emotional ailments, right? And they got to wait six months, Ooh, eight Jesus. months to see somebody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If your doctor, if you voice to them, your your, your primary care physician, because everybody should have one. Yeah. You voice to them that you need help. You need a referral to behavioral health to see a therapist, to see a counselor, psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever. And they don't make that referral, you need to probably find you another doctor. Yeah, mm -hmm. Right? That's good. Because they also receive training, medical doctors, yeah. uh, to, you know, ask certain probing yeah. questions when you go in for your visits. Yeah. And they're supposed to be timely in making those referrals. Yeah. And number five. That's good. Insufficient finances to cover the costs, including co-pays, uncovered treatment types, uh, and when providers do not take insurance. That's also a reason why folks don't get no help. I believe, if possible, all churches should have a mental health budget, including smaller churches, partly for this reason. So people's reason for not getting help won't be because they don't have finances to cover stuff. House of Love actually has a budget. And there are people that come to us that don't even belong to us. Right? And what we do is we, because, you know, my organization is Journal and Saves Lives. I, you know, have a mental health advocacy organization. We're able to refer them to therapists, counselors, give them some leads. And we say, since you come, I don't want to discourage you because I need to add cost this, cost that. We'll sew three to five visits into you. Amen. Right? And I said, if you take your life serious, you need to find a way to finish that. Yeah. But at least, yeah. go ahead. Um, I just want to say, I really believe the number one issue is fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because our, 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 especially men, mm -hmm. a lot of men won't go to the doctor at because all. of fear. At all. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. But that that's where community comes in. Mm -hmm. Because we perpetuate blatantly and even suddenly certain stigmas and stereotypes that keeps that fear going. But if we begin, especially Say with that. black men, yeah. begin to just create cultures of, it's okay to get help. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, okay to go get yeah. yourself checked yeah. out. Yeah. You can't just man your way through certain oh, storms. Right. They try. Right? They right. try, and it only creates other problems. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we need intercessors praying for this situation, yeah. why folks ain't getting help, right? Yeah. Our goal is to see the number of people not being treated drop. Yeah. 
let's intercede for those from the body of Christ that God has called to occupy government positions because we need them passing laws and stuff like yes. that, right? And in, to, and in the mental health field that they will take their rightful place. Mm -hmm. Adrian, that's right. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. Um, yeah, Thank you, I, I, I just want to say last year I went through um, depression after my dad died. Didn't realize it. I've been in bed for two weeks. Two weeks. That's and nobody right didn't watch yep. my butt or nothing. Yep. Until my daughter looked at me and she started crying. And I got up and I looked in the mirror at my Wow. Son. Yeah. And I was like, well, you look like Dick Gregory. Mm -hmm. And he was on his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a visual for you. That's what it is. 175 pounds to 121. Yeah. I was literally it's dangerous. Dead and bone. Wow. And I talked to my, call, she called my primary care, she called me. And she did the probing questions and told me that I needed to, you know, she would refer me to a um, counselor. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, she prescribed me some pills, which I didn't take. Okay. So that's not fixing the problem. Right. That's covering it up. Yeah, gotcha. I knew it was more to it than some pills. Wow. So I also went on the internet and just started looking. And I called like five places. They were booked out six months of wow. like and said, this and that. Yeah. And then within two weeks, one company called me Lamplight. And we did our Zoom call. Okay. Mm -hmm. And good, 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 good. my insurance covered it. I See? switched my insurance in November. See? Didn't find out till January they wasn't covering it. Mm -hmm. And then I had to wow. pay. Mm -hmm. But I, like you said, wow. if it's worth, yeah. mm -hmm. if it's, if it's wow. worth, worth it to you, you will do by any means to pay for it. We yeah. spend our money on so much other stuff, right? Yeah. 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 Wow, well, yeah. I'm not about to pay such a... You don't realize. We're going to spend it at the restaurant, take a yeah. trip, take that. So that's called investing into your own well-being. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Listen, and I'll, I'll make this interjection right here. Don't just think, oh, I'm just going through a little bit. If you notice you ain't been yourself mm -hmm. right. yeah. after two weeks, right. yeah. I don't even wait that long. Yeah. You know it's been four or five days. You need to... Check yourself. Right. You need to contact your doctor, even if you don't know where to look as it relates to finding a therapist or a counselor. Contact your primary care physician or the nurse practitioner that's supposed to be working in the office so they can triage you. Hey, I've been in the bed. I've been not myself. I ain't been yeah. wanting to do no hobbies. I haven't been wanting to do this and that. It's been five days, six days. Don't wait. Because the longer you wait, the harder the problem becomes. Now, that's the truth. We again, we need to pray, and I want us all, yes. just in your own time. Yes. That's one of the things you know. Every now and then, just pray, God, whoever's not in their rightful place, that's in the kingdom, that is not occupying government positions, that should, that is not occupying mental health positions, and they should. We ask that you get them into alignment. Amen. Yes. Right? Amen. Be because if we want to see change, we need kingdom people yes. in those seats of yes. authority. Yes. We got some, but we need more. Yes. Because when kingdom meets government and the mental health sector, I believe all of the above problems can shift. Yeah. Another stat from Mental Health America, uh, dot com. Florida is ranked 25th and Ohio is ranked 36th in that. There is a high prevalence of reported mental illness. Uh, in those states, but access to care is extremely low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the point of having care if it's inaccessible to the people that need it? Mm -hmm. What are some other reasons why people aren't receiving help? Look at somebody and say, denial. 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 Many people don't believe they have a problem. Yeah. It's a trip. <laughs> When your house smell like trash and everybody that come over it can smell it, but you know, ain't nothing wrong with my house. Everybody can smell the stench and see it but you. Yeah. Oh, that's clean. What you mean? Like clean, you got 14 garbage bags right there. Right? And I just use that as a humorous way to demonstrate a point. Some folks believe I'm good. I'm good. I'm good because it's a conditioned response because of society. Let me be honest with you. Let me tell you all something. Stop saying, hey, how you doing, if you ain't got time to listen. Oh, oh, now that is real. Because most of us want people to say, I'm good, Pastor Antoine, so you can keep it moving. One doctor, I stopped at Cleveland Clinic, I said, oh, no, you're going to listen. I'm not good. 
This one I was at main campus in Cleveland, Ohio, 2013. Mm -hmm. Said, I'm depressed, I'm going through this, going through that, boom, boom, boom. And he listened, and guess what? He was able to make a referral for me so I can go see, you know, get some help, whatnot. Mm -hmm. But that's just a little something, right? Because yeah. you never know, because we used to, let's be honest, it's a socially conditioned a response. Yeah. How you know, Pastor? I'm good. Like, no, I'm not good. I'm not blessed and highly favored, right? <laughs> T.D. Jake said we got to stop making positive confessions by, while ignoring the facts. So when things are evident, you're not saying this is my final conclusion, right? But this is just what I'm dealing with now. So stop that blessed highly favor. Say, no, I'm down, I'm low, I'm depressed. I'm dealing with anxiety. I, I, listen, let's get real blunt. We need to create environments and atmospheres where people say, I'm ready to blow my head off tonight. And I need help right now. I agree. We need to foster and cultivate, not just from leadership, but within the body, where it makes it easy for people to say, I'm thinking about doing this. Yes. Yep. I agree. The first step, back to the first, the first point we made, people don't believe they have a problem. The first step in any rehabilitation program is admit, admit there, there is a problem. Yeah. This is also where healthy community comes in. Let's start encouraging people that it's okay to admit they have a problem. Mm -hmm. We have to stop saying, no, suck it up. Put your big boy pants on. Put your big girl pants on. No. <laughs> admit there is a problem and deal with the problem. That's where we have to start changing how we socialize yeah. and handle people. Mm -hmm. Because some things we think are positive statements, are encouraging statements, are detrimental. Right. Somebody's dealing with trauma. Somebody's dealing, you know, has certain experiences and they carrying certain wounds. Mm -hmm. Oh, girl, be strong. Mm -hmm. I can't. Mm -hmm. I could. I would. I'm showing. I can't. What I'm going. Mm -hmm. Listen, this is why you can't suppress. Give people a chance to open up. Mm -hmm. Stop telling folks to be strong. Mm -hmm. I don't want nobody else to use that when people are dealing with stuff. Mm -hmm. Be strong, girl. Mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm pretty sure they know God got there, right? <laughs> They're looking for help. Exactly. Looking yeah, for yeah, a solution. Yeah. 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 In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Yeah, that's the word. I, I, I don't need nobody to just keep telling me, just take it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you help me deal with it. Ain't you his ambassador? Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> now, the second thing. Many people believe they can overcome their mental and emotional ailments through sheer willpower. No. If, if I just practice some self-control and, mm. and, and think hard enough, I can overcome this. No. That's a trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. If people could solve their problem by themselves, they probably wouldn't still be dealing with them. No. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> Let's normalize helping people to know that it's okay to ask for help. Look at somebody and say, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay, okay to ask for help. help. Okay. Healthy community is necessary and critical. Yes. Number three. Many people, especially blacks, are part of family circles that oppose accessing that mental right health care. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Talk about it. One of the things that some of us hear, right there. even throughout, you know, when you're growing up, it's a, oh, that's a little Chucky here at issues. He'll outgrow that. Yeah. Little Chucky is now 56. <laughs> the bipolar disorder has gotten progressively worse. Yeah. But in his mind, he won't go get help because he's in denial because he don't think there is a problem. Or in his mind, he keep playing out. Mama said, I'm going to outgrow this. You're 56. <laughs> get some help. Yeah. question. Said, don't just say, you know, it'll be okay, be strong, you know, pray for it. So if you're that person doing that and that's not what's supposed to be said to that person to help them, and you it's gonna be okay, but they know it's gonna be okay. What is it that you are to do? Or say, or well say? that's a good question. What I normally do is <clears throat> if like somebody I say, Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm depressed, I'm dealing with some things. I'll, I'll listen because you want to let the person talk it out because sometimes you need to hear fully of what they're trying to communicate right, to you. you. And then my next course of action is, are you open to help? Yes. Yeah. That's good. And then if they say yes, if they say no, stop the conversation because there's nothing else you can do. Forcing one more for people is detrimental. Mm, okay. So what I would advise is if you don't know how to point them to help, mm -hmm. then try to find somebody that can help them. Say, 
I don't know what to really do, but I think Apostle, or let me even call Prophet Matt, uh, he may know, right? You know, because it seems like you need some help. Don't don't try to give them a pet yeah, yeah. or you're going to be okay. Unless, no, no. Don't lie to people either. If you can't help, be honest right. with them. Right. Because what we start doing when we feel uncomfortable in the situation that we want to help somebody, right. uh, you know, Save you can us. think about doing this. Don't start giving people stuff to do and you don't know. That's dangerous. So it's best to just say, I'm sorry you're going through that. I'm going to pray for you, but we need to try to find you some help. I'm, I'm going to do what I can do to help you. But first ask them, are they open to it? If they say yes, then you start asking, hey, such and such came. Tell me, do you have any leads or how I can get them help? That's how you do that. That's good. Um, most of us either have directly in black households or indirectly been part of these conversations that say something like this. That mental health stuff is for them white folks. Yeah. <laughs> this is where those of us who know better have to start helping our friends, family, and loved ones to know that mental health problems have no bias. Come on. Come on. Emotional health problems don't have no bias either. <laughs> Nor a certain demographic of people that it affects. It affects everyone everywhere. Mm -hmm. The next reason why are people not getting help because of what I just mentioned about 10 minutes ago. Stigmas and stereotypes mm -hmm. surrounding mental and emotional ailments. And folks in the church perpetuate stigmas and stereotypes too, whether we like it or not. Yes, they do. Something like this. Folks with mental and emotional ailments are crazy and they criminals. They're not safe to be around. <laughs> For this reason, it's why we need to normalize having these mental health seminars and training. Because with proper education comes a decrease in perpetuated stigmas and stereotypes. Christians should never perpetuate stigmas and stereotypes. Because it goes against the foundation of love that we're supposed to live upon. I like that. Right? According to 1 Corinthians 13. And even when we're joking, we want to do our best to avoid perpetuating those stigmas and stereotypes. Because I think... We've allowed media mm -hmm. to paint the picture of what mental illness Absolutely. and emotional distress looks like. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't got hair sticking up everywhere and looking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you get what I'm saying? Some folks wearing three-piece suits, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. rocking the latest Jordans, right. hair is well-groomed, mm -hmm. and they dealing with some major problems. Okay. So get that out of your mind that mental illness and emotional distress has a look. Everybody that's dealing with it ain't got no long, sad face. And this is when we need prophetic insight. The ability to discern the spirits. That's good. It's amazing, folks. All you want to discern when folks are seeing and living crazy. Discern when folks is broken and need help. You get what I'm saying? People are like, oh, that one ain't living right. Okay. Do you know why they ain't living right? Maybe because they dealing with some issues. They were raped. They were molested, right? Mm -hmm. And this is why I always tell people, too. This is something that uh, God told me a long time ago. When it comes to uh, when you're doing altar calls and stuff like that, and, you know, when people say somebody come over with drugs, are we buying that drug spirit? No, no, no. Find out what drove them to drugs. Because yeah. you know what? Uh, God had me do a few times. Now you People are come right. up. He download insight. This is what drove them to what the yeah. condition is. They yeah. pray against that. Yeah. Lay hands the against root. that. Oh, yeah. The root, right? Because when you deal with the root, the byproducts yeah. fall by the wayside. Yeah. Now, what are the causes? Anybody have, have any? Alicia? Um, I have a really quick, I have a brother who had a mental breakdown. And um, when he had the mental breakdown, this is probably 2000, oh, they told him he was possessed with a demon. Oh. And they took him to church. They did all kinds of prayers and stuff. <laughs> ain't nothing happened. And then they stuck him in a, the doctor stuck him in a um, mental place down on Metro and 25th in the psych ward. He was mm -hmm. there for a couple of weeks. And then once they let him out, that just made him worse. And then he, he doesn't trust anybody. So now he won't go ever back, go back to get that kind of help. And, the, you know, when family, they're like, oh, that's the crazy son. Or that's, and he's not crazy. And he's right. not that just because that happened. I mean, right, he looks right. normal, everything. And he's okay now because he really, guys, dealt with him and mm -hmm. really helped him. And you would never, ever know. Okay. But I know because I was mm -hmm. there. And it's just sad to see that that's what they do. And so it affected him to this day. He's still affected by that. Yeah. But, go ahead. 
Chelsea. I, I think about even, I mentioned this before, Dr. Zachary Tim. Um, uh, this dude, three piece suit, nice looking, yeah. light skin, mm -hmm. brother mm -hmm. killed himself. Mm -hmm. yep. And that Everybody literally is. changed my mind about mm -hmm. mental illness. It changed mm -hmm. my mind about the clergy. It changed my mind about the things that, um, I don't even want to say spiritual Christians or anything yeah. like that. It just changed my mind true. totally about mental illness and about the things that people actually go through yeah. and the things that they um, confront because he never confronted his mental illness. Right. His son was at home sick. He was going through a divorce, but he never really put that out there. He never talked about it. He mm -hmm. never yeah. pursued help in the public eye. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, he was dead. But this is why I, I like to... Just take the analogy of a, a regular ladder. Just say a 50-foot ladder, right? If you fall off the stairs uh -huh. on a step two, that ain't nothing you nope. can do. Okay. Yeah. But if you get all the way up and fall, mm -hmm. when people don't deal with things right or there. they suppress mm -hmm. or sweep it under the rug and they begin to climb up and God is doing this stuff, it becomes harder mm -hmm. to admit until they're never going to admit, right? Until something shocking like that happens. But can I help everybody as well? Uh, some of the reasons why that happens is because of the absence of healthy community. Say that. Mm -hmm. But guess what? There are some folks that's, that that took their own life. I, I don't, sometimes I, I be buns and kill themselves, but we want to say took their life, right? Mm -hmm. That's the mental health first aid in me. So I want to say that chose to take their life, right? That had healthy community. That had folks praying for them, because I know some. Mm -hmm. That that told them, you ain't even got to work. Come, move them into the home, gave them a room, mm -hmm. everything, and they still took their life. Mm -hmm. So don't think it helps to have healthy community and a support system, but that is not the cure-all. Mm -hmm. There is something we have to remember for every problem that ails us. There is something called personal accountability. Mm -hmm. Even with people that are dealing with they have an, uh, episodes, manic episodes, yeah. right? Hallucinations. Mm -hmm. They're out of their mind, especially when you begin to mix uh, mental illness and emotional distress with substance use and things like that. You teach it real good. If, you, if they want help, you can love them. Don't make them. They still have to, at some point, exercise personal accountability. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can make the problem worse, wanting more for somebody than they want for themselves. Literally. And guess what? You will begin to develop yeah. mental and emotional <laughs> distress. <laughs> Try to make them get some help, Prophet T. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Adrian, you yeah, have I something? I doubt you finished it because I said it, it almost when you say it like that, it lets <laughs> the person who's trying right. off the hook. Yeah. Because yeah. I think sometimes you can take on a burden or mm -hmm. guilt, mm -hmm. you know, trying to convince someone. So when you say that personal accountability, yeah. that's so rich because, like, you, I can. I can give you all the resources, mm -hmm. but if you don't choose to follow yep. through. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yep. Listen, so th there was one That's lady good. that said, and she, I was in Weston, Florida, and she, her, it was her brother that killed himself, uh, took his life or whatnot. And he, she had did everything. The parents had spent about 120 grand on mental health therapy and right, services. Right, right. They were God-fearing people. Try to keep them in church involved in men's groups and, and, and support groups and everything. And she said none of that worked. He still took his life. And she said what was even more detrimental, uh, when they went to clean out his room and everything, he had created some type of secret compartment and had AKs and guns and everything that they never knew about. And she stood up and say, and she told everybody else there that had family members that committed suicide, she said, stop blaming yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She said, it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. My brother, who I love, took his life. Mm -hmm. not my fault. And we yeah. can't keep putting ourselves yeah. on the hook for things yeah. that are happening to yeah. other people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Teach. Teach real good. That's a way the devil keeps you bound. Yeah. Keeps you in distress. Yeah. Because you begin to create what's called an existential debt. Mm -hmm. If I would have did this, they would You don't know. Yeah. No. Stop right. making... What you've done or didn't do, the reason why they chose to take that route. You teach it real good. Yes, what are the causes of mental and emotional ailments? How am I on time? You're good. You got 30 minutes. Okay, good. 
genetics or heredity. Mental illnesses sometimes, as they say, run in the family, mm -hmm. suggesting that people who have a family member with a mental illness may be somewhat more likely to develop one themselves. But this is not saying that they will actually develop one. Mm -hmm. Just because something is prevalent in your bloodline does not mean it has to ravage your life. Right. 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 We need, with this mental, emotional ailments, uh, regular physical health problems, we need to start saying, this stops with me. Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. I agree. Yes. Hell no, it ain't going to run through me. <laughs> it stops right now. Yes. Right. That's part of speaking out of your Christ-centered spiritual yes. authority. Yes, yes. And then God will give you the works for that because some things are we predisposed to. But but there's a lot that's predisposed to, that I'm predisposed to from my family. But no, it's not going to affect me in my household. Yeah. That's my confession. Yeah. Now I put the works behind it so that, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, blood pressure, things running your family. But if you eat crazy, then you know, things like that. So we want to put the works to it, but still make those confessions. Stop saying, it happened to Granny, it happened to my cousin, it happened to my nephew, it happened to my lady. So what? It ain't going to happen to me. Right. Say that, sir. Right. Now, do whatever it takes so that mental and emotional health problems don't destroy your life. Personal accountability is key. That's their word again. And again, what I said about 25 minutes ago, let the Holy Spirit reveal to you yes. if you have some underlying mental and emotional health problems. Because what we do is say, I don't have no problem. You know why? Because we're comparing it to what we think we know mental say illness it. is and emotional distress is. <laughs> it looks a million different ways. Yes. So when you let the Holy Ghost show you and reveal to you, then guess what? He'll show you how it's manifesting in your life. Yes. And when he turns the light on some things, Listen, you can't shut that light off. Mm -hmm. now that's the truth. Mm -hmm. The next thing, a cause of mental and emotional health ailments, brain defects or injury, yeah. uh, substance abuse, yeah. mm -hmm. poor nutrition, exposure to toxins such as lead may also play a role in developing these issues. So everything ain't quote unquote a, a metaphysical issue or intangible thing. Certain things people are disposed, like I said, yeah. something yeah. happened to your brain. It, it, it's reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I see somebody here? No? Yeah. Go ahead, Adrian. But, you know, when you were saying you have to stop, it, it ends with me. That's just like when um, my daughter was telling me she was having a baby. I found out that her partner had sickle cell trait. She had sickle cell trait. If they that baby would have got both of those trait things, that baby would have ended up with sickle cell disease. Mm. I was on my face for nine months. And I told him it ends with me. Yes. 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 It stops. Praise right God. Here. And she may still have no trait. No yeah. Come on, that's a that's a crazy one. A couple of years ago, took her life, and then my nephew took his life this year. So that's my next prayer: that mental illness ends with them. Amen. And it goes no Amen. further than that. Yeah. Amen. And don't be the breeding ground for things to perpetuate in your yes. bloodline. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Now, other factors. Uh, we talked about that. So what I'll say this, back to the earlier point I made about demonic activity. Demonic activity is a cause of some people's mental and emotional health problems. But we must be educated as to the other causes as well so that we don't demonize everyone who has mental and emotional health problems. Listen to this point. This is a point I want you to get in your notes. Even if you cast the demon out that may be causing mental and emotional health problems within people, those people will still need some type of professional help afterwards. Mm -hmm. This is what I call after the altar work. Mm -hmm. Casting out demons, hear this, get this in your spirit. Say that. Casting out demons and leaving people out to dry without support and proper resources is what I call spiritual malpractice. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus. It's on page 23. It's on page 23. 23 at the bottom. <laughs> Spiritual malpractice. Let's avoid that. So how can we assist people? Because I don't want to be spooky over spiritual because there are some practical things we have to do. So how do we assist people with mental and emotional ailments? Number one, learn how to listen non-judgmentally. Don't listen to respond. Listen to understand and learn. Now that's good. 
Because sometimes we hear enough and we think we got the solution to somebody's problem, Pastor Antoine, and we end up steering them wrong, right? Or making the situation worse because we didn't hear out the fullness of what they were trying to share. So listening non-judgmentally, active listening. You know, not that listening was, okay, I know what to say right after this. I don't want to say it. No, 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 no. Listen <laughs> non-judgmentally. Number two, research and learn about mental and emotional health disorders, including the signs and symptoms that often accompany them. Get educated, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Number three, research and learn about various mental health, wellness, and coping tools that can assist individuals. So don't just learn about the problem. Learn about some of the solutions or ways that people can cope, right? Mm -hmm. Research and learn about various mental health organizations that are in your local area and national organizations as well that are there to assist people. I believe every ministry needs to have uh, some type of Document resources, right, of organizations, of mm -hmm. uh, uh, therapists, maybe in your area, however you want to put it together. But something if somebody has a need mm -hmm. and you can put it in their hand. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, Pastor, man, I need such and such. I, give me five minutes. I got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Easy. We stay ready because you never know mm -hmm. when, when the need is going to present itself. Mm -hmm. I done been places, sports games, chilling, right? And sometimes with me, I overhear conversations, mm -hmm. right? And so I say, hey, I heard you say such and yeah, I'm thinking about such and such. Okay, can you can I get your number? You got a you can you got an email? And I send them resources, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's how much I value, right? I listen because you never know when the assignment may present itself for you to interject, right? Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't want to see uh, something happen to somebody that I could have stepped in and intervened yeah, or at least right. offer some type of assistance, yeah, right? right? Now, research. And maintain access to a listing of local health, mental health professionals in your area. This includes therapists, counselors, clinical social workers, psychiatrists, psychologists, etc. You can get some of that information from www.psychologytoday.com slash US slash therapist. You can find any type of therapist you look for. I want a Christian therapist, a black Christian woman therapist. You can find it. Right, 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 right. I want a white Jewish male therapist. You can find it, right? So that's a good, uh, good thing. Another way we can assist, pray for these individuals and encourage them. Like I said, don't be the breeding ground for stigmas and stereotypes, okay? And guess one of the most powerful ways we can help these folks? Hold them accountable for their own well-being. Stop babying people with issues. I don't care how bad off your issue is. I'm not going to baby you. I'm going to be there to support you, but I'm going to hold you accountable if you want to be well. Yes. What Jesus asked me? Will thou be made whole? Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Do you want to be made well? Mm -hmm. Right? That's the question, yeah. Again, it is dangerous to force help or want help or want more for somebody than they want for themselves. So don't force nobody with anything, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They say no. Just pray that God will move upon them, right? And that he would cause them to want to desire the help. But you forcing it, like he's, they're adults. Yeah. We're adults. We make our own decisions and choices, right? Now, some of the wellness tools for coping and prevention. These are some practical things, but stuff that we, we fail at sometimes. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Drink plenty of water daily. Eat the bad stuff in moderation. Remain active on a daily basis, which includes exercise, walking, gardening, housework, interactive games. I'll make this point. You want to get this in your notes. A sedentary lifestyle is the <coughs> breeding ground for mental and emotional health problems. Wow. wow. <coughs> a sedentary lifestyle, a lazy lifestyle, is the breeding ground for mental and emotional health problems. <coughs> Next, journaling. On a daily basis, for at least 15 to 20 minutes, unrestricted <clears throat> writing, preferably in a quiet environment where you can gather and process your thoughts. Uh, I, I love to journal uh, because it gives voice. I have these, I have a few journals, probably, man, like a couple thousand pages that I've journaled since 2015, right? And I, people say, oh, man, you journaled that much? I said, this is why I ain't in jail. <laughs> this way, kill me. Right? Oh, that's good. Because it gave me somewhere to put my thoughts. 
This is just something that I recommend. This is not Bible. I'm not telling you you have to do what I'm about to say. But something that I practice, I don't even go into worship if, if I'm really angry or heard about something. Because I'm not receptive to nothing God has to say to me. So what I do, I journal those, those, those natural thoughts out and get that stuff out so then I, when I go, I can then be fed. Yeah. Right? That's just something that I practice. Yes, sir. Uh, try it. If, if it works for you, fine. But that, that ain't by, but that's just a recommendation. <laughs> that's good. Um, I work at Job Corps. So my students are now coming to my center. But Let's normally they would stay virtual. So the students that I just saw come on center, their faces, the emotions, you could see that they were like walking into like, what is going on? Walking in a whole new environment, strangers. So I started with my new cohort. We're going to start journaling for the first two teams. And so I, I came up with the first day, you know, what was your night like? And then the next day was like, so what did you eat for breakfast? What did you prefer to eat? You know, so it gave them an opportunity to not just get those feelings out, right. but to even talk to the other people. They were able to collaborate and, you know, interject and interact with it's the powerful other students. Too. And it was mm -hmm. like, so today I wasn't there, right? Okay. One of the students got kicked out. I'm uh, like, oh my God. First, as soon as I walked in, I'm getting a phone call like, your student got kicked out. I'm like, what happened? I'm thinking Damn. to myself, we ain't journal this morning. You know, like, that was the first thing I thought about. It's a powerful tool. And I'm going to tell you why a lot of people have an issue. Like I said, this is not Bible. Right. I'm not presenting yeah. to yeah, you yeah, all yeah, like yeah. to do this. We don't know how to settle down long enough yeah. to do that. People, I can't do no right. Because yeah. we used to being on the go. Check this out. Society tells us we got to be on the go, mm -hmm. right? We have a hard time just pausing, mm -hmm. right? But it is a powerful tool, though, because there are some things, like I said, uh, you may be very angry. I'll pull out some paper if something happened even... You know, at work or when I'm out and about, listen, I done pulled out paper like, look, yes, and just write stuff. I feel like slapping the hell out of this person. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like choking them. Yes. There have been times where things happen and I'm like, man, I want a car to run me over. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, can we be real? Some of the yes. thoughts that go through our minds, right? Yes. I put that on paper yes. and write, give it a voice so that it can't live on the inside oh. of me. Because yes. when you let that stuff marinate on the inside of you, it creates real deal problems. Yes. Some yes. folks have natural health problems, yes. heart problems, yes. kidney problems, circulation problems because of distress. Yes. Yes. They allowing that stuff to marinate in their organs, in the inside. It begins to literally affect your health. It does. Give voice to those emotions and what you think about. Yeah. Yeah. Stop thinking it's sinful to have those feelings. God know you got them. Give it a voice. Put it on paper. Get it out somehow, right? Don't let it be on the inside of you. Um, stay connected. Another uh, tool, well, wellness tool for coping and prevention, stay connected to and involved in a healthy community at church, at recreational centers, peer and family support groups. Put this in your notes. Isolation is dangerous. Yes, it is. Real dangerous. Isolation is dangerous. Now, the next one I'm about to say, it's a very, it's a hard struggle for a lot of people, old and young. Disconnect from all technology, including cell phones, computers, and televisions, at least for one to two hours every single day, your brain will thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Folks don't know what it's like to unplug from their cell phones. Not no music, not no preaching, nothing. Cut everything off. And just rest and relax. Rest your man mind. Yes. Sir. Your your literal natural brain will thank you. And you know, go ahead, pass that to I had to get to a point in my life where I enjoyed the silence. Yeah. Thank you. Same here. Same here. I love it. Yeah. Enjoy the silence. You know, it's like that might be part of my problem now. Because I love being home alone. Mm -hmm. Come on. It may be a part of my problem. <laughs> but I wasn't always there. Okay. Like it. For a long season in my life, I, I hated going on. Yeah. You know, so now, now that I'm there, it, 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 and to me that shows a, another level of maturity. It does. It, listen, you don't always have to be on the go. I, I want to, and I'm going to bounce back to this point, but I have to say this. 
Stop thinking you always got to be on the go going somewhere. The devil wants you always on the go yeah. because it's hard to make connections. It's hard to connect the dots. It's hard to gather your yeah. thoughts always being on the go. It's okay to pause. Look at somebody and say pause. 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 But back to the point I mentioned about technology. Overexposure to technology has been shown to have an adverse effect on our mental and emotional health. Stop going to bed with your cell phones. The last thing you look at, oh, I got to get this last status in. I got to look at this TV show. Turn that off. Learn how to rest your eyes. Your brain. And your brain. And for surely, when you wake up, stop letting that be the first thing you absorb is technology. Right? We are bombarded with TV and cell phones, radio, all media, social media, all day. Unplug. I'm not saying you can't enjoy it. I just say recommendation one to two hours each day just to unplug. Yeah, yeah. Nothing mm -hmm. going in. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I can yeah. do that. And then this one also people have a problem with. Get plenty of rest. Yeah. Look at somebody say, get some rest. Yeah. Get some rest. You know what? Periods of inactivity. It ain't resting sitting on your couch texting your best friend. <laughs> that ain't rest. And get plenty of sleep. Rest and sleep are not the same thing. Right, right. Two different things. I'm going to tell you something. People say this, oh, I'm good with two hours of sleep. The, nobody's physical body can operate off that type of sleep. It's going to damage you in the long run. It's recommended between five to seven hours. But your body needs proper time to rest. In our minds, you think, I'm good. <laughs> Just give me two, three hours. No, you're not. Nobody is. Trust me. It's going to catch up to you. Right? And one of the things that makes you do is age faster. Mm -hmm. Hey, ma'am, how you doing? Ma'am, I'm 32. <laughs> I thought you were 78. <laughs> you ain't slipping, man. It makes you age. Start getting some sleep. <laughs> right? Right, you look tired. Lord. Now, <laughs> it's a humorous way to demonstrate an important point. Yes. Right? And so I'll end with this. I'm just going to give you a few uh, resources, just give you the name and phone numbers that uh, you probably want to just keep in your cell phones and things like that. Number one, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. You can jot it down, but make sure you have these phone numbers in your cell phone. Because you never know when you're going to need them. The phone number is 1-800-273-8255. Uh, That's 1-800-273-8255. It should be in that package you got. Mm -hmm. uh, next, the crisis text line. It says text hello to 741-741. This is information because guess what? If somebody need it, bam, open up your cell phone and give it to them right then. Right, right, right. Pray with them, but give them a resource. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Veterans Crisis Line. That's a big demographic of people that are dealing with some things, right? Mm -hmm. It says call 1-800. It's the same. It's the same number. Uh, as, um, but when you do the press 1 or you text that 838-255, it'll route you. You just tell them, hey, I'm a veteran or, you know, so forth. Uh, the dis Disaster Distress Helpline. You call or text 1-800-985-5990. There are a lot of other resources, and this is what I'm charging you all to do. Get educated. Start with these basic resources, but there are some other, uh, like there's a, a mental health organization that's in the greater Cleveland area called NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness, right? They, they provide peer and family support groups. They provide certain resources uh, for people that, because everybody may not, quote, unquote, Need a therapist or a counselor, they may, hey, I just need some, you know, resources uh, as it relates to mental health conditions or just to be linked up with a peer and family support group. These are the type of things that you have to know about, right? Know what's in your area. Go ahead. I was just going to say, this has been very good, but I want to say also because I wrote in my notes, uh, stop being afraid. Yes. Amen. Because I think that's probably the number one reason why we don't address it <coughs> in the church yeah. is because of for fear of whatever that fear may be is people are afraid to address it. But, but one of the reasons why they are is because of the underlying stigmas and stereotypes yeah, that we perpetuate. Yeah. Oh, what a possible. 
think of me, man? If I'm going to be moved from uh, my position or what are they going to think of me at work? Am I going to be fired? Yeah. Why do you think you have Fortune 500 execs jumping off of bridges and stuff, right? Because they knew they couldn't go and tell their superior I'm dealing with mental health problems because I'm going to miss this $2 million check that I'm getting. Right? You know, um, I realized probably about five years ago and the way I kind of came upon it is because we always try to handle things spiritually. Um, yes, and then you find out that when they come back in your office, nothing has changed or it has gotten worse. Yeah. So, you know, you'll sit and say, well, take these scriptures, go home, look at them, meditate on them, get them in you, and it'll change you. <laughs> and, and we just gave them the answer yep. that the church would give, right? Yep. And then they come back to you and you notice something, it didn't change. But they did do what you said. Right. Mm -hmm. So then you have to realize there's something bigger going. I say it's above my pay scale now. Yep, yep. But I, I realized even as a pastor that there were certain things that I, would, I, I was not equipped to deal with. Mm -hmm. Understood. And then I had to get me a network of other people Resources. that dealt Protection. in the mental health um, field mm -hmm. to start sending people to them and still being able to wrap myself around them on the spiritual side, but Teamwork. letting someone deal with them on the mental side, and I started seeing almost 100% results Amen. in people's lives because now we dealt with the issue or the root of it, right. and then we can add God to it. I mean, God and that working together again. Right, right, right. And then they became not healed, but became whole. Because not only did we handle the mental health issue that's here, mm -hmm. we dealt with all the things that, the baggage that came along mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. And now you have a person who's whole, and it's no, um, I want to say, smite on the church. It's right. like a good leader should be able to recognize, just like if you right. came in the office right. and you got a broken arm. Hey, um, we can pray for you, but uh, I see your arm break, bro. Mm -hmm. Go, go, <laughs> get, but you're going to get a cast on yeah. that. No, yeah. the Lord go. And then we have to break the stigma that is on people because they think God will take care of it. Sweetie, if God would have God would have worked a miracle already, you've been dealing with this 20 years. Right. So let's go get the help that we need, and we need to be able to recognize the help that people need so we can get them home. Yeah. Amen. 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 Any other questions or comments? Mother I just Jackson? like to say that this is excellent because mm -hmm. I think you eliminate the fears with what you shared with yeah. us and told us today. Amen. You eliminate the stigmas and you make it reality. And now it's our choice to yeah. use the knowledge that you have given us yeah. to further it for everyone. Amen. Yes. Especially our family. Yes, yes ma'am. So I think that the stigma, the fear for us, we don't have it now because you've given us what we need. Yes. Yes. That's what education yeah. does. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Anybody else? That's true. That's true. Pass Just uh, uh, another resource as we have these. I just gave this one to someone the other day in, in a Cleveland, Ohio, 211. Yeah, so we have been called 211 yeah. and tell yes. them if you need some behavioral health help. services, they will connect you with uh, that, those services in your area. So 211 is a great resource as well. Amen. Amen. Well, I was wondering, are you concerned that maybe some of the resources might be eliminated because of the conservatism that's crossing America right now with all the different kind of conservative leadership that's, that's trying to form? That's always a possibility. But what I'll say <laughs> from what different news reports that I've saw, when power players, family members start being affected, yeah. they want to eliminate nothing. Yeah. So I, I, I don't foresee that. Anything is always a possibility. But like I said, just blatantly. Listen, they don't care when it affects us, but when they hit when those right, yeah. those yeah. lawmakers yeah. or your son didn't took his life yeah. or they own they gonna make sure the stuff stay around for us right so amen listen if any other comment i want to make sure that if anybody have any other questions any comments mm -hmm. awesome. Great job. amen, amen.